Hey, welcome to How to Play, brought to you by The Games Capital. Today we're looking at Cult Express, which has just recently been nominated for the 2015 Spiel de Jar, and certainly it would be a worthy winner. Now, the concept of this game, each player takes on the role of a train robber, trying to steal as much loot as they can before the end of the game. Now, as you can see, the game is visually very appealing. It has this three-dimensional train that you actually play on, so you're going to have these little characters that you're going to move around the train from carriage to carriage, maybe sometimes even up on the roof, as you go about trying to gather as much of this loot as you can. It's heaps of fun, but before we get into the game, let's have a look at what's in the box. So the components for Colt Express are really cool. We've got first of all this 3D train, which looks awesome. Each of the carriages has slightly different artwork in it, gives it a nice feel. Then as well as that, there's all these little extra bits which really don't serve any purpose in the game, but they look really cool. So you've got little rocks and cactuses and other things that you can lay around and you get this nice feel for the game. As well as that, each player will have a little wooden uh, cowboy token which they use to move around uh, the train. We have uh, these little cut out uh, loot bags, gems that are laid out on the train during the game going to be collecting those or stealing those from the train. Each player has their own deck of cards or set of cards that they will use to carry out their actions during the game. As well as that you'll have uh, an individual player board which outlines what your character is and also a special ability that your character has during the game. There are also round cards which determine what happens during each round of the game, a couple of different decks of those, and that's basically it. So as you can see visually Quite, a, quite an amazing game. But how do you play? Well, let's have a look at that now. Now this game is what we refer to as a programming game. So in other words, what you're going to be doing each round is programming the actions that you want your little character to take. So the turn basically consists of the start player selecting the action from his set of cards that he wants his character to play first. He places that onto a central pile, then the next player will choose his action. Now none of these actions are carried out until all of the actions have been selected by all of the players. So in turn order, you select your actions, then you select your second action and so on, until all of the actions have been chosen. Now some rounds there are three actions, some rounds there are four, just depends. Once they've all been selected, the start player will take that pile of cards and starting from the bottom of the pile, he will reveal the action that each player is going to take and then they will carry those out. Now what can happen is you may have a nice plan set out with your actions, but depending on what other players do, those actions can be messed up and that's where the chaos of this game uh, comes into play. It can be quite amusing seeing what happens. So let's have a look at what each of those actions are that you can perform. So the first couple of actions that you can do relate to movement. Now the first of these is this card, which has an up or down arrow. With this particular action, you can move your cowboy either up onto the roof, if you're inside the carriage, or you can move him from the roof back down into the train. So that would uh, be the action for up and down. Then you also have uh, right or left movement. Now with this particular movement, if you are in a carriage, you can move either one carriage to the right or to the left of where you are. Or if you happen to be on the roof when you take this action, you can actually move up to three carriages. So I could move one, two, three, all the way towards the front of the train and vice versa. So while you're on the roof, obviously you can move further and get further along into the train. Now the next action is this card with a little dollar symbol up in the top corner and that is the robbery card. Now when you play that card, you can take any loot that happens to be in your location. So on the train there might be these bags of money or these gems and they might be there in that cart. If you select that action, you can take one of those and pop it on your player board. Now the gems are worth $500 each, the money bags range in value from 250 up to 500 and they're always face down so you're not quite sure what you're going to get in those instances. There's also one other type of treasure which is the strong box 
which is located at the start of the game in the front of the train guarded by the marshal. That's worth a thousand dollars if you can get hold of that. So that's the robbery card. The next action is the punch action. Now you can perform this action as long as you are in the same location as another player. If that's the case, then you are punching that player and they are immediately moved either one space to the right or to the left into the next carriage and they will also drop some loot that they had previously collected and you get to choose what it is that they drop and leave that wherever they were and are pushed to the next carriage. That's the punch action. The next action is the shoot action. And this is where you get your six guns out and start blazing away. Now in order to take this action, you can only shoot a player who is in an adjacent carriage. So not in the same carriage as you. When you do that, you give them one of these bullet cards that you have on your player board. Now you have six bullets that you can use during the game. This card goes into the other player's deck of cards so that on their next turn when they are drawing cards to carry out their actions, if they get one of these, it takes up a space in their hand which limits the actions that they can perform during that turn. The more bullet cards they have, the, the less easy it is to, going to be to select actions. Now if you happen to be on the roof when you are carrying out the shoot action, you don't have to be in an adjacent card. You can actually shoot along the roof as far as you like line of sight. If there's a player in between, obviously you have to shoot the first player that is in that line. Once again, they get a bullet card, same deal. That's the shoot action. And then the final action that a player can perform is moving the marshal. So this card has a little uh, sheriff's badge symbol in the corner. When you play that action, you can move the marshal, who is the little yellow cowboy, and he's patrolling the train trying to catch the robbers. So when you take that action, you can move him one carriage to the right or to the left, and if he ends up in a carriage with another player, with another cowboy, he immediately sends that cowboy, that bandit, to the roof. And the player receives one of these neutral bullet cards, which work much the same way as the player bullet cards. They go into the player's deck and clog it up, causing less actions to occur. Now, if a player ever ends up in the same space as the marshal, perhaps he might have played moving down, he will automatically then be pushed back to the top and receive one of those bullet tokens. So that's all the actions in the game. Let's see how a turn actually works. So at the start of the game, you will take some of these round cards, which are split into two groups depending on the number of players. You'll take four of those randomly, and also one of these final round cards as well, to provide you with five round cards that you're gonna play, and that will be the length of the game. Now each of these round cards depicts how the cards or the actions are to be played during the round. So using this as an example, mostly the cards that you play, your action cards, are played face up onto the pile. And that's what this little symbol blank card indicates, that you play the action, everyone can see what action you're taking, and they subsequently may uh, change their plans based on what actions uh, get played. In this instance, the second card, this symbol indicates that you can play that card face down, so in secret. Then the third and fourth card, you'll notice are joined together, which indicates that you play two cards at once, so you'll perform two actions in a row, and then the final card is played. So once all of those, in this case five actions, are placed onto the pile, the start player will take the deck, and in the order that they were played, he will reveal those cards and the actions are carried out and the consequences of those actions uh, are taken. Then at the end of the round, once all of the actions are played, sometimes there might be an event that takes place. And there's a whole variety of different events that could take place. For example, the passengers might revolt, in which case everybody that's in a carriage gets a bullet. Or all the players that are on the roof might immediately get sent to the caboose. Or the sheriff, or the marshal rather, might shoot all players that are on the roof above him. A whole heap of different things could 
uh, happen and you can factor that in because you'll know in advance that that event is taking place. Then once all five of those cards are played through, which indicates five rounds of the game, the game ends and whoever has the most loot at that point is the winner. Now each player also has an individual character's ability, so let's go through briefly those now. So each player, each character in the game has a special ability that will help them. So we have Ghost. Now his special ability is that the first card that he plays in every round can be face down, so hidden from the other players. Cheyenne, when she punches somebody and they drop their loot, instead of just falling on the ground for someone else to pick up, she immediately gets to take it, but only one of the money bags, not a gem or the briefcase. Django, he, when he shoots someone, he actually pushes them as if he had punched them. So that's a good ability to move players around. Bell, if anyone attempts to punch or shoot uh, another player, they will never choose Bell if she is in the carriage with another player. They'll always pick the other player first. Then uh, Tuco, he can shoot in the same carriage as uh, someone in the same carriage as him, or even he can shoot up or down depending on where he is. And then finally, Doc gets seven cards to choose from at the start of each round. So normally, players get six cards from which they can choose their actions in a round. Doc gets seven. Now the only other thing that happens at the end of the game is whoever has managed to use the majority or the most of their bullets, so whoever has the least of these cards left, they've distributed them to the other players, they will get a bonus of $1,000 as a reward to add to their tally. Player, as I said, with the most loot at the end of the game is the winner. In summary, players take turns selecting actions from a hand of six cards, effectively programming their turn. Once all the actions have been selected, they are then carried out in the order they were played. Players try to collect as much loot as they can while also attempting to stop the other players from doing so. At the end of the fifth round, a bonus is given to the player who has used the most bullets. The winner is the player with the most loot. So Colt Express is one of those games that you don't want to take too seriously. It's a load of fun, but it's very chaotic. One of those games where your plans are bound to get messed up. You might be planning this great move where you're going to get this treasure that's on the cart and somebody punches you into the next cart and that throws your plans out. Or the marshal gets moved into the space where you are and you get shoved up to the roof and that messes you up. So don't expect your plans to always come off, but that's part of the fun of the game and also trying to mess with other players. The other thing that can happen too is you, the cards that you draw might not allow you to do the action that you want. So if you ever get stuck, what you can do is forego playing an action card for one of those turns and draw three new cards from your deck and hopefully then you'll be able to do it. So that's always an option as well. So if you like a bit of chaos in your gaming and a lot of fun, then I thoroughly recommend this great family game, Cult Express. Well, thanks for watching and happy gaming.